Hi everyone, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, chat monitors, for your help. I appreciate it. Thank you, Balan, Greg Dixon, Isha West, Marilyn Hopkins, Barbara Almeida, Haiti. <laughs> you not in Haiti, are you? Okay. Uh, today's Friday, so everyone, you are allowed to ask me a question. In the meantime, I'll start. It seems like Trump is very frustrated and they are lying again because uh, basically Biden has did, has did something last night that Trump cannot do. No former Republican president, although if I'm not mistaken, only one is alive, George Bush. Uh, or no major figure, political figure, uh, will join him. So this guy is mad. So he thinks he's going to be able to raise, I believe, tomorrow $30 million. Good luck. For the month, yeah. One night, like Biden did last night, that's not going to happen. In any event, uh, also, you know, this is serious. Trump He's so full of himself and so angry. And uh, like I said the other day, he would violate the gag order. According to report, the name of the judge's daughter is not, hi, Linda Sandoval, is not in the, uh, whatever the court sends out, you know, things she's not, the court, the court order, I guess. Her name is not on it. For Trump to do something like that, uh, he's not going to get away with it, by the way. The judge is going to have his say. I'll tell you that. When? I'm not sure. But the judge is going to have something to say about that. This is not being taken lightly. And e everyone now, there is another level of seriousness that uh, I feel among law enforcement and, and intelligence people when it comes to Trump because it feels like Trump is looking for ways to some way, somehow, something similar to January 6th, get people to come out and commit violence, violent acts. But he's looking for a way a, to do it so he has, you know, he can deny. Oh, it's not my fault, just like he did on January 6th. You know, you go to the Capitol, but, you know, he didn't mean for anybody to vandalize and uh, do the things that they did. But I'm not, I'm not worried about it. So I don't want anyone to worry, but I'm simply saying to you what I'm getting from him and some people close to him, okay? It seems like he's under that <laughs> illusion that uh, if he can scare some, some people, they won't send him to prison and they will put him back in the White House. I, I, I can't explain it to you guys, okay? I, I've been getting this for the past couple of days, and last night I was getting it stronger. That's why I am saying to you, don't be surprised. As we go forward, he begins to realize he's not going to win the election. Uh, and events are slipping away from him. Like, you know, he can no longer control, like, the media, what he said, his events, everything he does, they're not going to have the same... The media is not going to uh, talk about it the way they talk about it today. And he's going to try to incite his most violent followers. There's, there's a price for that if they were to try to. But that's what Trump is thinking. And for some reason, 
it feels like to me, Don Jr. is uh, is in on it. You know, the, the, the thought of causing, causing violence. And believe me, January 6th, like I have always said to everyone, was not conceived by Trump alone. The entire family was in on it. And some of them, yes, they knew uh, he was inciting violence. They simply didn't want their fingers uh, all over it. The only person I don't feel uh, was willing to go along with it is Ivanka, because she's more of a, of a chicken. Uh, she will do certain things, but she doesn't want violence. I don't know if it, possibly because of her kids, but my prediction is Trump will try it, he's going to fail, and there are going to be consequences for it. That's my prediction. Somebody posted a question about uh, <laughs> Marsha Green says, folks better stop being stuck on stupid. You're right. Whitney Morehouse says, Ivanka is more cautious. Yeah, you're right. You have a point. Hi, sweet beyond the stars. Somebody posted a question about, uh, oh my God, I, I forgot. Lou Gasset Jr. has left us. This morning I heard about it. But you know, uh, I, when I focus on him a little bit, it seemed like he was tired and ready to go. But he said he had a good run. Uh, it, it, you know, at the beginning was difficult. His acting career or his career in, in, in general. But he's happy where he landed. So, uh, He's great. He, the feeling I'm getting when I focus on him, he's grateful to everyone and how things went. That's what I get from him. Electra Storm says Lou was 87. Yeah, he was tired. Yeah, because it's, I heard this morning he had uh, 10 years ago, he had prostate cancer. So, you know, it seemed like there were other health issues with him as well. I showed 522. So, but yes, he's, uh, he's happy where things landed and, you know, like what, and what he did. Does he, does he, buddy, where am I getting a lady here? Does he have a daughter? I don't know if he has any kids. I've not, I only heard this morning on TV. There's a lady here. Does anybody know if he has a daughter? And I don't know who that, Luke Gasset Jr. Okay, there's a name that starts the letter A. I don't know, I'm getting the, the name that starts the letter A. I don't know if that's somebody around him or one of his kids. Okay. Yes, Lieberman passed away too. Because the reason why I remember, well, I, 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 am, I am a Lou Gasset fan, so when I heard that this morning, uh, you know, at 87, I didn't realize, I mean, the way the, the, the days are going by so fast, you know. I didn't realize he was 87. I haven't seen him on screen for a while, in a while, but uh, I didn't realize he was 87. In any event, the thing is, uh, yes, we lost the senator as well uh, from Connecticut, Lieberman. Him too, he fully accomplished, but it seems like he was in pain. They said he, he, he had a fall. And as we know, some of us, he probably had, uh, the, the minute I'm say, I started saying this, I'm feeling his bones. You know, you know when you have, uh, oh, okay. Electra Sum says, Lou has two kids' names, Sadie and Sharon. There's an, I'm getting a name that's just the letter A. I don't know who that is. Probably the husband of his, one of his kids, or somebody in the family there. But anyway, hi, Jordan Johnson. Uh, it seems like osteoporosis. He, pro he probably had something like that, it feels like to me, as well, among other things that uh, he might have had. But, 
Marsha Green says, uh, yes, he was, he was very good. He was a very good actor. But him too, he feels like he, I'm talking about Lieberman. Lieberman feels like uh, he, he was able to accomplish a lot. So he's not unhappy about his passing. You know, he didn't want to leave his family, but when it's time to go, it's time to go, unfortunately. Okay, somebody asked me a question about uh, Sacred Heart. says, I lived, in, I lived in Connecticut for years, not a fan of Lieberman. I, I, I was a fan until the last 10 years. I, I thought it was, he was good at first. I, th I don't remember, he turned his back on the, on the Democratic Party or something like that. I don't remember exactly, but, and then lately he was exploring a run with the, uh, whatever the other, the third party people. Okay, somebody asked me, is PDD contemplating suicide? Yes, uh, it has crossed his mind. But you know, uh, I don't feel he's going to do it. PDD will not commit suicide. He's in a lot of trouble. But you know something? It's not only him. Uh, I, I saw a video this morning of him out with his two kids. I mean, you know, uh, I'm sure he, he, he's not going to... And they are 17, his two daughters. I don't know from what I'm, I'm not sure if they, he went to eat with them or something like that. But uh, he, Marsha Green says, will he kill himself? No, admit you're wrong. I mean, he has no choice. He doesn't have to admit that he's wrong. And you know something, uh, this is going to have a major impact on show business, whether they like it or not, because it feels like to me a lot of young kids, let's say, for example, for like Bieber, well, Bieber is no longer a young kid, but when he was younger, Usher, among others. I'm not going to go into all the detail because it's not my thing. Uh, I feel this guy has abused a lot of people and a lot, a lot of people hit his guts. They could not find a way to go after him. And uh, what I am seeing is a huge book. And I'm not saying it's done, the, 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 the feds they are going to compile a voluminous amount of information against him. And let me tell you, as I'm saying this, oh boy, one of my favorite girlfriends, uh, she's Puerto Rican, she's from the Bronx. What is her name, please? She, she, she was, well, I, I, I thought they were an amazing couple. Her and Dee Dee, she's married to uh, an actor now. I don't. She's she's a she's a singer. She's an actress, a dancer. That woman does it all. J Lo, thank you very much, Rebecca Gilberto. Don't be surprised if even J Lo is uh, get pulled into that situation as well. Okay. And uh, a lot of people from the music industry are going to get into some very bad situation with this thing. And I don't feel it's only Sean uh, that's going to uh, suffer here. A lot of people, and that's going to force this situation, the Epstein situation, the, the movie director, I forget his name, the one that went to prison not too long ago. He was sued by a few ladies. Rebecca Gilberto says, Clive Davis. Yes, I, I don't want to get into all that stuff. You know what I mean? Because it, it, it's so, it's so much churning. It's, but yes, all these people, okay, 
it's going to turn the, the entertainment industry upside down and they're going to have to clean up that stuff. And it's because of the... Uh, thank you very much, Sandra Patterson, Harvey Weinstein, all these things that have taken place over the past years. And also, they have left a trail of, you know, victim. They victimize too many young people. And that's what's going to come out of all this uh, Sean Diddy Com situation. Uh, Rebecca Gilberto says it's going to be ugly. Yeah. It is ugly already. If you see some of the things that are being said, not all of it is true on YouTube. I don't, I watch the cup, I, tr I try to watch from people who, like, I'll go to the TMZ website and I'll take a look at, repeat, try to figure out reputable uh, people on YouTube and I read uh, from what I'm getting from them. Since I'm not connected, Sandra Peterson is asking, have they arrested PDD yet? No, I don't feel they're going to have to. His lawyers are in contact with the federal government. Uh, but there is a lot going on behind the scenes that I don't even think uh, PDD is aware of. His lawyers are probably in the process of figuring out, figuring out how bad this is. But it's going to be very bad. A lot of people are going to be implicated. A lot of people are going to be talking to the federal government. And I'll tell you, um, Jello is pretty, I mean, uh, Jello didn't do anything wrong, but it's from what I understand, when she was, well, some things happened when she was dating uh, Sean. I, I was so heartbroken when I heard they broke up because at that time I didn't know. I was beginning to hear murmur of how bad he was. Uh, because I thought she was so beautiful. Her and him made a beautiful couple, I thought. But, you know, we tend to judge other people the way that we, we judge ourselves. You know, I saw a beautiful woman. I mean, he's a good-looking young guy. Why not, you know? And it was like, oh, boy. But, yes, she's going to get dragged in, whether we know about it or not, because it feels like to me she's on a list uh, from the feds of people that they're going to be talking to. They're going to drudge everything. Uh, as much as they possibly can. And also there is this, uh, a lot of people are saying they could not locate Didi or he was trying to run away. You can't run away on an airplane, trust me. Uh, all the electronics that are on board an airplane and you carrying your phone, you're making phone calls, trying to figure out what's going on, calling your lawyer. My friends, there is no way this guy could have gotten away. And we, I, this is not, I don't need people to tell me this, I, as I, I, I know electronics, trust me. They, our government has equipment that can locate that plane on, even if they shut everything, all the electronics on board off. And that's not gonna happen. Okay, they, you know, they need GPS tracking. Trust me, they know exactly. And I, when I heard that, I'm like, oh, God. No, he couldn't run away. He couldn't go anywhere. So he was never running. He couldn't run. And there were some people are talking about uh, the feds when they went into his house. Uh, they, from what I understand, they disabled the... Uh, all the security cameras, of course. That's the easiest thing to do. They can get a subpoena, go to the cable company, shut down the Wi-Fi, regardless of what it is. And then they know, because they have the plan, the blueprint of the, the, blueprint of the house, and the wiring, the configuration. People, that, people who work there, they, they are talking to a whole lot of people. So my friends, this guy has nowhere to go except sit, relax, enjoy with his kids while he's free. The hammer is going to come down and it's not, going to, it's not only going to be on him. A lot of those guys, uh, I mean, some of them are victims, 
and they continue the victimization because they don't know better. Yeah, they lie, but uh, this is going to precipitate a lot of changes in, uh, in show business. Okay, but somebody asked a question. I, I No, I don't see him committing suicide. The thought has occurred. You know when you wake up, something happened to you the night before you go to sleep? And you wake up the next day, it's like, bam, hits you in the face? That's what's happening to him right now. But he has people who has been to prison. He knows, he understands how things work. So he's trying to get used to that frame of mind because he knows it's coming. There's no doubt about it. Okay, and I have some more questions for today. Uh, somebody asked me if Marjorie Taylor Green is on steroid. I don't, I am not getting that. I don't feel she's on steroid, no. Okay, she's just, yeah, she's aggressive. If you were to look at her chart, I have, I looked at it once. I wanted to see why she's not grounded, why she's, you know, I figured, okay, there was no planet, uh, Earth, uh, Earth houses, no planet in the Earth houses, and that's what the problem was, okay. Uh, one second. Somebody was ask, asked me, do I see Alito? and Thomas leave uh, the court. They would have left already. The reason why these two guys are still on the Supreme Court is because, uh, you know, people like Leo are saying to them, don't, uh, don't leave. So, that's why these guys are still there. But I would be surprised after Biden's re-election. They don't like, they don't want to be there. The only person who's there and he's going to poke, he's going to, you know, keep, you know, he thinks he can poke us in the eye, those who don't like him. That's, that's how he thinks. He doesn't like, he doesn't love himself. He's Thomas. Alito has problems with, you know, liberal Z as well. But to me, did you guys see last night? Oh my God. Uh, I don't remember which program they were talking about uh, Justice Thomas's, the people who clerk for him. He just hired a woman who said something like she hates black people or something to that effect. I don't remember exactly, but she's a bigot, okay? That's the type of people that Justice Thomas uh, loves to put, uh, love to hire. And also, they were explaining that there were a number of people, his former clerks, got judgeship from the Trump administration. And I was not surprised because that shows you this guy has major psychological problem. He's damaged. He's damaged good because uh, the way he grew up, since he feels, and, and, and they said he made a statement once, if you are black, something like that, uh, white people would never see the good in you. Something to that effect. If anyone watched that show, can you please post what, he, what they said he said once? Something to that effect. I'm, I'm paraphrasing what he said, what uh, Thomas said. But all those things go to prove that this guy hates himself. He thinks that instead of go to, going to counseling, process the traumas he suffered, when uh, growing up, you know, instead he wants to inflict pain on people uh, like him or reminds him of himself or his parents or where he grew up. Ari said his father was like that too. Are you serious? I don't, I don't know anything about his dad. 
Oh my God. Patricia Aberson says, Tom I see is angry. Uh, he was born black. Yeah, he, he always has been. <laughs> Yikes. I never heard, I, I've never heard anything about his dad, to be honest. All I know, he was born in a very poor section of either Alabama or Tennessee in the South somewhere. And uh, that family, or they, they were from an, an area where they didn't even speak English. They speak a dialect. They spoke a dialect. They probably still speak it now because uh, there, there was a group of uh, former of African-American former slaves who were trying to keep alive a language and also uh, a cast certain custom. I don't know where in Africa they came from. Uh, yes, I just said they were poor. Yes, I know they were very poor. But my God, at least in this country, you can uh, get out of poverty. What if you were born in Haiti? You're born in poverty, there is no way out. You're stuck. And you, can, and you can bet. I was watching a video on YouTube not too long ago where there was a guy, he, he was probably in his 60s. The guy is living in a hut in Haiti, you know. But at least I guess he has that to rest. But can you imagine he was born in, in, in that condition and he stayed? And at least in this country, there is opportunity. Uh, for upward mobility if you put in the effort, and he did. Uh, but yes, this guy is full of anger, and he's dangerous in my opinion, because you see, the people he's training, I'm not quite sure what he's thinking when uh, he's training those racists to go and attack and prevent people of color from progressing. Basically, that's what he's doing. Uh, these people don't like him either. But I guess he doesn't think about that. But when I watched that show last night, I did not know that he was hiring bigots on, on, on purpose. And he was training them, making them worse bigots than they ever thought they could ever be. And him, he, it seems like he, has, he feels like he has a license to teach those people who hate anyone that's different from them and keep them from moving up. Yeah. I think this guy should be shunned and, you know, uh, oh. Anyway, I, uh, but he's not, he, I'm, obviously we know, but the, the, he's not going to retire now. Alito and Thomas will retire after the battle of uh, well, after the election, because they're going to realize whether they want to stay there. They're going to have to reevaluate whether they want to stay there on the Supreme Court for another four years. I doubt it. Uh, I, I feel Alito would be the first one to bail out, and after that, Thomas. And like I said, the only reason why they are still there is because of uh, people like, well, the, 20, the 2025 plan that they have, that they want those, those guys to remain until... Uh, Trump become president again. That's what they're hoping. And that's not going to happen. Okay. Let me see. I'm looking for questions. Thank you, Barbara Hall. Yes. Barbara Hall uh, was watching the same show. Barbara Hall says the, that that woman that uh, Justice Thomas Hyde says, she doesn't like black people. He said he sees her as his, yeah, he sees her as his daughter. Imagine that, my friends. Oh, somebody like that, I would not, you would not come, oh God. I mean, I know, we, you know, uh, we have to talk to those people like her, we should talk to them, but I'm sorry, I don't have, you know, I wish I was more, a little more saintly. And I could forgive people like that. If she was uneducated, she didn't know better, yeah, I would. But someone, you went to college, and guess what? She's going to get 
a half a million dollars after she's done working at the Supreme Court, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Okay. So, no. I'm, 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 I'm a good person and I try to improve every day, but I'm not that good. Okay. And also, I don't know how many of you, I'm sure all of you have heard that uh, basically the Trump is asking certain questions in order for, for you to be able to, ha to be hired, in order for them to hire you at the RNC. Uh, you have to show them that you believe that the 2020, that Biden lost the 2020 election. And this proves to me that I have been right when I told you guys a while back that, uh, or I've been saying this for a while, that he would put the type of people he would put at key po in key position in the government for them, in order for them to execute his uh, crazy policies, firing people, uh, report on people, people they have to prosecute and put in jail until they decide what they're going to do with you. Yeah, that's Trump's plans. That's his fantasy. It's a fantasy, that's how I call it. That's what Trump, besides the 2025 plan that we've heard about, Trump fantasizes about what he's going to do if he were to become president again. And Liz Cheney is correct. He would not leave. And this time around, since he has an idea, he's stupid, he doesn't know, but he has enough sycophants around him that would tell him how to go about staying like he had quite a few to being disbarred now. Their livelihood is being taken away from him, from them, justifiably so, okay? But there are a lot more people like that that are willing, ready, and able to help Trump remain president for life. They don't understand what they are doing. They think they'll be safe until uh, Trump does something to a member of their families. Yes, but Trump is fantasizing about how to go about, and you know, this is hard to, t to say and hard and difficult to accept that something like that would happen in, the, in America. Yes, Trump would have people executed. And when, do you guys remember the Central Park Five? Uh, and I, well, this is just an example. He was calling for the execution, and he has called for the execution of other people. Trust me, this is something he would love to be able to do to, uh, if he were to become president. He wants it, okay. And the other thing, I'm just going to give you, proving you guys, and what I'm getting is intuitively, because as I'm talking, I'm seeing things he has said that, uh, to prove what I am getting, okay. He was very impressed with Xi and Kim Jong-un, the way, you know, he was uh, uh, saying the way she was able to command over a billion people and everybody does what he says. Yeah, so that's what Trump wanted to be able to do in this country, and that includes uh, executing people. That's one of his fantasies. Him and PDD are not too far, uh, 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 different fantasies, I guess, but yeah, uh, that would be something that would ha happen in this country if Trump were to become president, because that's he, you know some of his fantasies. I was thinking about that last night, and I'm like, should I repeat this today? Should I tell you good? Because I was getting that yet last night. Sometimes you know, I stop and change. What my focus, those of you who are psychic and intuitive can understand this. You can change your focus to different areas when you are reading. Like I was thinking about, I'm not, I don't remember exactly what I was listening on CNN. And then I was wondering what this guy would do, what Trump would do if he were to become president again, although I knew 
about him placing people in key position in the government, just like he, he started doing the last month or last weeks of his presidency. He didn't have enough time, but this time he has enough. He, if he were to be reelected, he would have four years. I mean, at least. He would not leave, but he, he would feel, okay, I have enough time now, okay, to prevent another election. Oh, this, this would be a mess. Oh, okay, I know what I was watching. Somebody who worked for Trump, they were talking about Trump wanting to, to unleash the military on us. And I'm, when I heard that, I, I mean, I wasn't surprised. And for a moment, I was in the kitchen there, and I was thinking about this. This guy fantasizes about being as powerful as she and go after people. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, my God, should I, should I mention this tomorrow? But I thought, I would, I thought, it, I thought it's important to share. It's not going to happen. And believe me, people would not... At first, people would go crazy, but uh, this is a dangerous uh, path to this guy. It wouldn't believe me. It wouldn't be fun. Let's put it that way. Okay. Somebody mentioned Haiti. I uh, hey, I, I, I said it yesterday, and I'm going to repeat. And something happened uh, yesterday afternoon. <laughs> the, the gangs in Haiti are being investigated and infiltrated. They have no clue. Okay? The Canadian government spent special, sent, I'm sorry, not, not spent, sent special forces to Haiti. We, Americans, have special forces in Haiti. Do you guys remember a long time ago I said those uh, gang leaders? They will wake up one morning and find one of, one of, of our, uh, I forget the name, but one of our special forces, people sitting next to his bed, waiting for him to wake up. That was just me, you know, putting it, just being facetious, funny, okay? It's unfolding right now. All those gangs in the capital has been infiltrated. They know where they are. They know their movement. They are being studied. They are evaluating what type of weapons, or they already know. And believe me, the kakamemi, <laughs> excuse me, the expression, but I don't think that's a curse. Uh, I mean, they, they can kill you with them, okay? But those little weapons, no. They're not. These guys don't stand a chance based on the helicopter, the Canadian helicopter that I saw landing in Haiti yesterday when I was looking at those Special Forces guys and our Special Forces people, they will be decimated. And they don't even have to, those guys don't even have to engage those gang members uh, mano a mano. They, can, they have the ability to take those gang leaders out remotely. And it's coming. That's my prediction. That's what's coming. That's what's taking place in Haiti right now. A lot of information is being gathered. Uh, yeah. We'll see. Okay. I wanted to enter that. Oh, Eastman got disbarred. There are two. There were two of Trump lawyers that were being. They're all going to get disbarred. They're going to have major problem. Oh, Barbara Hall says Milo John Eastman was also his clerk. No wonder. <laughs> oh God! Thank you for posting this, yes, John Eastman. There is a judge, I believe, in the Fifth Circuit in Texas. I forgot his name. The one who is into. Uh, there is an app that he, the judge or some way somehow managed to gain access to that app that a lot of women use to track their period, okay? 
some way, somehow, he was able to gain access to, the, to that data. And uh, that guy, too, used to clerk for, he's from the Fifth Circuit. Uh, he used to clerk for Thomas. All right. Let me see. The, the, these, these people are not, oh my God. They're not, uh, the, Thomas is, is a poison, if you ask me. Absolutely, Stewart says Eastman, Eastman has earned it, for sure. Whitney Mohauser says, Alina I didn't, I Haba is looking for jobs on conservative media networks. I, didn't we talk about that either last week or the week before last? I'm not surprised. Yes, I agree with you, with you Sandy Patterson, uh, Peterson, I'm sorry. Jeffrey Clark will be disbarred also. I agree. All right. <laughs> Sandra Peterson says, don't forget Cheeseburger. Oh, Cheeseburger is in deep trouble. Cheeseburger right now is hoping he doesn't get a good jail because he, what it feels like to me he's doing, he's trying to be as helpful as he possibly can. So he, he stays out of prison. That's what he's doing. Just like Meadow, as I'm talking about cheese, Cheeseburger, I, I'm, I'm being sure Meadow. Those guys, there are a few of them that are, they are providing a lot of information. A lot of uh, people around PDD as well. That PDD thing, oh my God, it's going to be bad. MK says, shouldn't they be charged with potential half a murder? <laughs> I don't know about that, <laughs> but that makes sense. Amen. Okay, friends, thank you very much for spending time with me. Thank you, chat monitors, for your help. I appreciate it. Unfortunately, today, I, you know, I, I, you know what? I'm thinking of expanding this uh, stream to an hour because I'm thinking at the end, last 20 minutes, of doing celebrity predictions and among other things. So... Uh, I'm going to be evaluating that on over the weekend. So probably next week, if I'm, I'm, I'll probably go for an hour. We'll see. But unfortunately today, I can't stay late. I will be back tomorrow, members. I'll see you tomorrow night and everyone else the same. Tomorrow is Saturday, so you will have to ask, to ask personal questions or political questions or pet questions, whatever you have. I'll be happy to help. If you like the channel, please subscribe and also don't forget to tap on the no notification bell. If anyone would like uh, a reading from me, the link to my website is below the video, psychicmilu.com, or you can send me an email or, well, yeah, you can send me an email, but better to call me or text me on my YouTube number. We can negotiate a time that's good for both of us to talk. Again, thank you everyone for your support. Thank you for being here. Thank you, chat monitors. And thank you, new subscribers. I appreciate your support. I will see you all uh, tomorrow, same time. Till then, bye.